This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, a lot of data coming out of these talks. Mine is a little more, uh, gonna be a little bit more clinically oriented, uh, and we're gonna discuss eversion endarterectomy and uh, uh, the comparison to standard carotid endarterectomy. Uh, as you can tell, even today, carotid endarterectomy still has a lot of controversy in terms of its management and the, uh, the type of surgery that one uh, should do to treat it. Uh, there's a low margin of error in terms of doing carotid procedures, whatever it is, whether it's percutaneous or open, uh, but overall the results are really excellent. Uh, and we're really, to some degree, quibbling about uh, tenths of a difference in data points. Randomized trials have validated that uh, carotid intervention is appropriate for treatment of uh, symptomatic and asymptomatic uh, significant stenosis. Uh, in terms of the uh, carotid endarterectomy, there have been several uh, surgical approaches that have evolved since first reported, uh, but the choice is often based on, uh, on one's training. Uh, I would wager to say that uh, many of you are basically doing a carotid endarterectomy just as you were trained uh, many years ago. Uh, and the type of endarterectomy one does uh, is likely based more on training than any real uh, hardcore data. Uh, the most common uh, carotid endarterectomy being done is uh, uh, a, what we're going to call standard with a longitudinal arteriotomy and patch. Now, what about an eversion endarterectomy? Well, what exactly is that? It's an operation where you uh, aggressively dissect out the carotid. You perform an oblique transection of the internal carotid, remove the plaque using an eversion maneuver, and then directly reattach the internal carotid to the bulb. So this is a uh, schematic of what we're talking about here where uh, the artery is divided, uh, then uh, the adventitia uh, everted uh, when the endarterectomy is uh, complete. The arteriotomy in the common carotid is extended and uh, the artery is anastomosed back to itself in an, in an endocyte manner, uh, <clears throat> sewing adventitia to adventitia. Again, uh, note that the adventitia of the internal carotid is everted over the atherosclerotic core past the endpoint, and it allows close evaluation of the entire circumference of the endpoint. Here is just a different uh, simplistic diagram when the eversion is reduced, uh, the arteriotomy is extended so that the common carotid can be carefully endarterectomized as well. By reanastomosing the vessels as uh, shown, it allows for widening of both the internal carotid and the common carotid, preserving conf the carotid configuration, and in a sense, uh, patching both the uh, common carotid and the, and the internal carotid with each other. So why do eversion endarterectomy? Well, proponents of the procedure have stated that it, there is decreased operating time and clamp time. You avoid uh, placing any kind of prosthetic material in the neck. Uh, certainly, uh, it will facilitate reconstruction of a kinked or coiled internal carotid artery. And there have been reports suggesting that there are decreased rates of restenosis. And perhaps that, to some degree, is the most important uh, factor and the one we'll look at. Uh, today. If we want to compare it to standard CEA, what are we talking about? Well, there, there clearly has been evidence that superior results will be obtained by performing a patch angioplasty with primary closure as compared to simply uh, closing the artery without patch. It's also been demonstrated that the type of patch material makes no difference in terms of the outcome. But is eversion and arterectomy really better? Will it reduce stroke risk? And will it decrease the risk of recurrence? Well, some enthusiasm uh, 
came out in the, to some degree from uh, several papers, particularly this from the late 90s uh, from Italy, where they compared the uh, uh, standard endarterectomy with patch angioplasty versus uh, eversion endarterectomy. Uh, as you can see from their series, uh, they uh, obviously were uh, uh, excellent uh, surgeons in that you can see the mean operating time for an eversion endarterectomy was 31 minutes. Uh, with a clamp time of nine minutes. Uh, and interestingly, to me at least, their mean occlusion time for shunt placement is 26 seconds. Uh, but also you can note that the number of shunts used in their series in the eversion group was quite small. And we'll come back to that uh, later when we talk about uh, should you or can you shunt patients with eversion endarterectomy. But they did have very low, uh, they had very good stroke rate uh, and essentially comparable statistically to the uh, patch group, but their recurrence rate was exceedingly low, uh, essentially zero uh, in the eversion group. And because of this, there began to be some uh, interest in eversion with the suggestion that it is a way to reduce restenosis or recurrent carotid disease. Uh, and again, just recently, they've repeated their, their uh, evaluation now with 1,905 endarterectomies. And again, the stroke risk is very low. Uh, the restenosis rate is also under 1%. That includes carotid occlusion or moderate to severe restenosis. So several randomized trials have come out uh, comparing the two uh, types of endarterectomy. The so-called Everest trial, the eversion carotid endarterectomy versus standard trial, uh, 1,353 patients were randomized. And although they did include patients who had both primary closure and patch angioplasty, uh, if you take out the patients with primary closure, there was really no, dis no difference in the outcomes. Uh, a systematic review of five randomized trials, again, did not demonstrate any evidence of superiority of one technique over the other. And quickly, in looking at this, there are, these are the five trials that they evaluated, uh, all randomized trials. The only one that included both primary closure and patch was the Everest trial. The rest of them were uh, comparing the standard endarterectomy with patch to eversion endarterectomy, and again, no difference in, in the outcomes, no difference in stroke rate, or any real statistically, statistical difference in either procedure. Uh, in the five trials, the common, uh, compiling all the data, the overall risk of stroke or death for eversion endarterectomy uh, was a, a slightly bit uh, less than patch angioplasty, but not statistically significant. And the risk of restenosis, again, slightly better for eversion, but, again, but not statistically significant. Now, what about potential concerns of eversion endarterectomy? I think that some people feel that it can be difficult to visualize the endpoint or, to, or, or that a distal flap could be present, but it might be hard to detect once you've taken down the eversion or so-called reversion of the, of the artery. But uh, again, because the stroke risk in, in most of these studies is low, I do not think that's, that's an issue. But what about if a shunt is needed? That may be an issue in some cases. Uh, the Italian authors did uh, present some data where they showed that they had no problem placing shunts. However, some people do feel that shunting uh, eversion endarterectomies is a bit uh, difficult or cumbersome. Uh, and I probably would, would recommend that if you are doing eversion endarterectomy with selective shunting and your intraoperative assessment, either with EEG or stump pressure or, or however you're, you're deciding to shunt or not, indicates that a shunt should be placed, likely you should switch over and do a longitudinal arteriotomy with a patch because it appears as though most people do feel that it is a little bit difficult to shunt these patients. And in fact, in most of the studies, the, the rate of shunting was exceedingly low. So uh, one other uh, little issue that, can, that seems to come up with patients with eversion endarterectomy is that frequently, the po postoperatively, the patient's blood uh, becomes hypertensive. 
And there is a concern that because of the circumferential dissection required of the uh, internal carotid artery, that the nerves to the carotid uh, barrel receptors are, are, are divided. And studies have demonstrated that uh, patients can become hypertensive, even to short and midterm, uh, from uh, having eversion end arterectomy. And this, in fact, may prolong the hospitalization while uh, treating it. Interestingly, in this study, which was a uh, 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 compared uh, eversion to uh, standard end arterectomy, the standard end arterectomy had a much more common hypotension postoperatively, where the eversion was uh, significantly uh, elevated blood pressures. So that's just something to, to keep in mind. I think that, uh, to some degree, this is an interesting uh, approach and maybe a take-home message for my uh, take on aversion and endarterectomy. The Massachusetts General uh, reported uh, their 10-year uh, evaluation of carotid endarterectomy and their follow-up. Uh, they reported all carotids done between 1995 and 2005, and beginning in uh, January 2001, they switched over from uh, standard carotid endarterectomy with patch to eversion endarterectomy uh, with the hopes of reducing uh, restenosis rates. This is their follow-up data. So you, as you can see, there is really no difference in uh, freedom from severe restenosis. And so their, their take-home, which I think is uh, my take-home from this talk, that uh, the data uh, is consistent with previous randomized trials and indicate restenosis rates are basically similar between eversion endarterectomy and patch endarterectomy. And uh, I, I agree with their, their conclusion that uh, surgeons uh, should basically choose the procedure that they're most comfortable with and have the ability to uh, get a good result, that neither of the two procedures will uh, give a superior result uh, just because of the, just in the type of procedure. So in conclusion, an eversion endarterectomy is a safe and effective technique. It does allow for shorter clamp time. It, it does not require prosthetic in the neck and it is useful in straightening of the uh, internal carotid artery. But there is no evidence that affords benefit for reduction of restenosis. Thank you.